Welcome to Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hello, I'm Frenchie McGee, Associate Pastor. Welcome to Sacred Journey. Whoever you are and wherever you are, wherever you've come from and wherever you go when we leave the sacred space together, the prayer is that you would experience God's presence in your life in a way that fills you with joy. And especially on this Thanksgiving Sunday, in a way that fills you with gratitude for the blessings and abundance in all of our lives. If you don't already have it, you're invited to download today's worship guide. The worship guide contains the prayers and songs and other information about today's service to make it more personal and accessible for you. Good morning to you. 
I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and I hope you get to be with your families this year. I want to invite us to reflect on the story of Thanksgiving, of early European settlers and native people coming together to share with one another, which I believe was often the case. Can we come together to truly start to care for the natural world and to care for our brothers and sisters, especially the Native American peoples who, was, who had so many thousands of years of finding a balance on this land. I believe we can all move toward that in a much greater way than we have learned to do thus far. And I want us to think about the land and the air and the water and the spirit, the elements. Sing with me now. This giant tree here was brought down by a series of tornadoes as were countless trees in this area near Luck, Wisconsin last year. And the European colonizers swept through the Americas and devastated the populations of native people through disease as well as uncompassionate greed for lust and power and resources. I want us to think about that and think about the native peoples, millions of them that are still living in this country today who are bearing the weight of those centuries of oppression and, and I want us to reflect on how we can change our society to help lift up those people and all people of color during this time. And I want to be thankful for all the blessings and privileges that I have and encourage you to do so as well. Hi, my name is Ben Pollock, and I'll be reading a poem by Rafael Jesus Gonzalez, a poet who grew up in both El Paso and Ciudad Juarez on the U.S.-Mexico border. He grew up bicultural and bilingual, so I'll be reading the poem first in Spanish, then in English. The poem is entitled Gracias, which in English translates to grace. Gracias y bendito sean el sol y la tierra por este pan y este vino, esta fruta, esta carne, esta sal, este alimento. Gracias y bendiciones a quienes lo preparan, lo sirven. Gracias y bendiciones a quienes lo comparten, 
y también a los ausentes y a los difuntos. Gracias y bendiciones a quienes lo traen, que no les falta. A quienes lo siembran y cultivan, lo cosechan y lo recogen, que no les falte. Gracias y bendiciones a los que trabajan y bendiciones a los que no puedan. Que no les falta. Su hambre hace agrio el vino y le roba el gusto a la sal. Gracias por el sustento y la fuerza para nuestro bailar y nuestro labor por la justicia y la paz. Thanks and blessings be to the sun and the earth for this bread and this wine, this fruit, this meat, this salt, this food. Thanks be and blessing to them who prepare it, who serve it. Thanks and blessings be to them who share it and also the absent and the dead. Thanks and blessings to them who bring it may they not want, to them who plant and tend it, harvest and gather it, may they not want. Thanks and blessing to them who work and blessing to them who cannot. May they not want, for their hunger sours the wine and robs the taste from the salt. Thanks be for the sustenance and strength for our dance and work of justice of peace. Thank you so much. Oh 
built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of love. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true, where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and as symbols of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place We join our voices together now in a prayer of thanksgiving and gathering. Holy One, on this day and every day we are grateful for the breadth and depth of creation, for the awesome vastness of the universe and the invisible glory of nature hidden to our eyes for the living creatures that surround us and for the very processes of life itself. We thank you for the mystery of consciousness, the pleasure of beauty, the exercise of understanding, and all that shimmers with gladness and praise. We give you thanks. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7. And I'll be reading from the contemporary English version of the Bible. Please hear these words. Sing joyful songs to the Lord. Praise the mighty rock where we are safe. Come to worship God with thankful hearts and songs of praise. The Lord is the greatest God, king over all other gods. The deepest part of the earth is held in God's hands, and the mountain peaks belong to God. The ocean is the Lord's because God made it, and with God's own hands the dry land was formed. Bow down humbly and worship the Lord, our Creator. The Lord is our God, and we are God's people, sheep from God's own pasture. Listen to God's voice today. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's give thanks for this earth the Lord has made for this
this day the Lord has made. Shout jubilation, shout jubilation. Let's take care of the creation that God has given for us to survive and to love as He does. One more time, the first verse. Lord, your hands have formed this world. Every part is shaped by you. Water tumbling over rocks, air and sunlight. Each day sign that you make all things new. Happy Thanksgiving. I've been thinking a lot about Thanksgiving these days. When I was a kid, whenever I headed out the door to go to a friend's house to play, my mom always said, don't forget to say thank you. And whenever I received a gift, my mom always made sure that I wrote a thank you note. Every birthday, every Christmas, year after year, mom would always ask, did you send a thank you note? I'm so grateful that my mom taught me how important it is to say thank you. And I tried to teach that to my kids too. On most days, I remember her words and instruction and I remember to say thank you, but sometimes I forget to send a note. It's not because I'm not thankful. It's because my good intentions don't always result in an actual thank you note that is sent and delivered. I realized how important this is this summer. Our daughter Elizabeth was married in September and just before the wedding ceremony was about to begin, she gave me a letter. And she gave her father one too. It was a beautiful letter written in her own hand. It was all about all the ways that she was grateful for being our daughter. It was about what she appreciated in our character, in our way of parenting and who we are as people. It was a beautiful Thanksgiving letter. Now, I always knew that she loved us, but I will always treasure that Thanksgiving letter. And I'll read it over and over again. I wonder, do people really know when I'm grateful when I don't take the time to tell them? How do you tell people you're grateful for them and for what they do? Gina McGregor wrote an article for the Washington Post a few years back about Campbell's soup CEO, Douglas Conant. He wrote at least 30,000 thank you notes to his employees over the course of his 10-year career at Campbell's. He said he committed about an hour each day to writing thank yous by making time to write them during his commutes or while traveling. Why? Because he maintains that most senior executives develop the skill to think critically and they look at things critically, but they don't always develop that muscle to compliment their employees. So he made it his practice to intentionally write thank you notes at least an hour a day expressing his thanks. How intentional are you about giving thanks? Do you carve out time in your busy day to thank people? It's a growing edge for me. This year, it's been far easier to critique and lament than it has been to thank. It isn't easy navigating a pandemic, social unrest, hurricanes, fires, and political turmoil. I find it's far more easy to plead for help from God than to thank God. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Philippians in chapter 4, urges us to make our requests made known to God, and as we keep our hearts and minds Jesus, he says we will feel filled with a peace that passes all understanding. I yearn for that peace, and I imagine you do too, and we are invited to ask for help and make our requests to God, and so we should. But what about giving thanks? The psalmist calls us to worship calls us to come and take time to give praise and thanksgiving to God. And whether you sing with an organ or with a jazz band, it doesn't really matter. Because the point is 
that we should come and worship God because God is our rock and our salvation. God is a great God. God is a great king who reigns above all other gods. God is a maker and a, and a creator of all that is. God is our shepherd and we belong to God. There are so many reasons to give thanks to God and they're all right here in Psalm 95. And really that's why we worship, isn't it? To give thanks to God. But you might be wondering, does God really need to be constantly reminded of God's greatness? I'm blessed to be married to a wonderful man. My husband, Lindy, is patient. He's kind, never boastful or rude. He really knows how to love people. He loves me. He loves our family, the church, and he has compassion for those who suffer in other parts of the world. And he knows that I'm grateful for him. He knows because I told him once. No, I'm kidding. I tell him every day. But not just because he needs to hear it, but because I need to say it. Giving thanks by expressing gratitude changes me because the practice of actually giving thanks reminds me that my life is not half empty, that our lives are full, very full, because God loves us and has given us the gift of abundant life. Giving thanks creates a grateful heart that is more open and more available to God's spirit, ready and receptive to follow God's lead. And God can do amazing things when we offer God our grateful and joyful hearts. Pastor and writer Nadia Boltz Weber says it this way, Praise isn't stroking God's ego syncopatically, telling God how awesome God is, as though God has low self-esteem and created us just for this. Thankfulness is not an obligation like the thank you note to Grandma, but rather praise and thanksgiving is an act of freedom that doubles the joy of what was received. I like that. Praise and thanksgiving is an act of freedom that doubles the joy of what was received. Well, what have we received? Well, we received assurance. The psalmist says God is our rock and salvation. And I don't know about you, but for me, as the world lurches from crisis to crisis with news of new COVID restrictions and numbers of COVID surging and hospitals stretched beyond capacity, God's love and presence in our lives has and will always remain steady and dependable. Even though we walk through the darkest of valleys, the psalmist says in Psalm 23, God comforts us and strengthens us and leads us and provides for us, leads us through the valley to the other side. We have received the gift of beloved community where God's salvation is made real in loving relationships that remind us that God offers abundant life even in the most desperate times and desperate places. One way God is doing this is through our Abundant Health Initiative. You may not have heard of it before. Our United Methodist Church's Global Health Initiative is called Abundant Health Initiative. In 2016, at the General Conference held in Portland, the United Methodist Church set a goal of reaching 1 million children with life-saving interventions by 2020. And today, we give thanks to God that we have reached and exceeded this goal. The United Methodist contribution to this global effort to end preventable deaths of newborns, children, and adolescents reached 1,075,732 children, according to our data, as of October 2020. Since the launch of the Abundant Health Initiative in 2017, United Methodist Global Ministries has invested over $26 million in 50 countries mobilizing millions of partner and kind contributions, reaching over 1 million children, adolescents with health and interventions in thousands of communities across Asia, Africa, North America, and Central America. You gave to this effort when we paid our apportionments, the offering we make with other United Methodists around the world to fund our connectional ministries in 150 countries around the world. United Methodist Communications reminded us that the initiative's name is derived from John 10.10, where Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Life is not half empty, it is full. Kathleen Griffiths, Interim Global Health Team Lead and Program Manager for Maternal, Newborn, and Child Health says, We are committed to living into our promise to children by imagining abundant health for every child in every place. She said, we go to places where there is no one else, where no one else wants to go. What is inspiring to me about the Abundant Health Initiative, she says, is that so many more children are now more likely to survive their fifth birthday. 
More children are thriving through healthy meals, substance use of prevention, and positive youth development programs. Our support has improved the quality of care for mothers and babies in some of the most challenged places in the world. Through the initiative, we help people learn that in order for a child to be healthy, it takes more than prescriptions, more than staff in a hospital, Griffith said. It takes a holistic community response. Friends, I give thanks today that we at Hennepin are able to join other United Methodists to empower communities all around the world to be the beloved community that saves lives. We have received salvation and an abundant life, and we give thanks. We join the psalmist in saying, let's come into God's presence with thanksgiving to make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. But sometimes that's easier than others. In March, just before Easter Sunday, I remember sitting with our staff, pondering the news that our bishop and our governor had instructed us not to worship in person during this COVID pandemic. And we thought, now what? We were humbled when God provided what we needed to learn how to make a pivot from in-person worship to online worship. You'll probably recall that when we first started online worship at Hennepin, it was a little bumpy. But I give thanks that you didn't abandon Hennepin, and neither did God. You watched patiently and participated even as we figured out how to use new tools, and we are still learning. We still look forward to the day when we can gather together in person, but isn't it a wonder that God gave people the intellect and ability to create this technology so we can worship and meet online? Isn't it a beautiful gift to realize that those who are disabled or differently abled are able to participate now more fully than ever before because worship online puts us all on equal footing? No one is sitting on the edges watching other people worship. We all worship together. We've also received the blessing of people who have reached out to people who aren't comfortable with technology or aren't familiar with it to help them stay connected. People like Kathy Rossman, who helps her mother, Shirley Johnson, who's been worshiping with Hennepin for over 80 years. She makes sure every week that Shirley can connect and watch and be participant in Hennepin worship. I also give thanks for our Bible study and life group leaders who are continuing to shepherd their members online. I give thanks for all the ways that you are reaching out to check on and pray for each other. You've received and we've received new inspiration from God about how to love our neighbors and a new appreciation for just how important our beloved community really is. Because we've learned that beloved community depends on all of us, not just some, to build it, and to keep it strong. We've received the gift of an extraordinary team of staff, members, and friends who work together to keep Hennepin vibrant and fruitful. This is God's doing. Our worship team and communications team do such a great job that most of us are able to forget about all the mechanics and technology and just focus on worshiping God. When we hired Mark Squire a few years back, we had no idea that he'd be able to direct worship production as well as direct our music ensembles. We are so grateful to God for him. And for Reverend Frenchie McGee and Steve Holbert who designed Sacred Journey Worship. I give thanks for all the lectors who learned how to record themselves reading scripture and update their files, their digital files. I give thanks to God for Dennis and Julie who always find just the right poem to touch our hearts in Sacred Journey. I give thanks to God for our members and our staff who hunt down copyright permissions. I give that God thanks for our communications team, Adela Dahm, Kathleen Ambray, Ellen Sundell, who stitched together 20 video segments for each service every week, adding captioning and graphics and balancing for light and sound and editing out awkward pauses and layering music tracks under speaking tracks to create a beautiful seamless whole. I give thanks for musicians like Steve Hobart, Mary Louise Knudsen, Donald Livingston, Jim Ahrens, Mark Billy, Sherry Spear, and Mary Monson, who lay down individual music tracks for every single piece of music every week so they can be layered and assembled to sound like they're all singing or playing together. Isn't that just amazing? What a miracle! 
And I give thanks for Roy Hansen, who spends many hours on Saturday uploading our large digital worship files onto our website, Hennepin app, Facebook, YouTube, and phone app. I give thanks for Lynn Carroll and Rick Belbatowski, who minister to our kids and youth with their lay ministry teams, because they know God loves our kids and youth even more than they do. And I give thanks to God for all of our choir members and musicians who are patiently or impatiently standing by, singing in their showers to keep their vocal cords limbered up and ready for that day that will surely come when Mark Squire will finally send out the call, it's time to come back. I give thanks to God every week, every single week, every single day for every person who comes to worship, praying that worship will be inspiring and God honoring, making space for God's spirit to challenge, comfort, and feed our souls. Oh my, we've received so many blessings from God. I give thanks for every staff person of Hennepin who shows up with a great attitude every day, faithfully working from home to keep our ministry strong so God can do what God wants to do through us. We spend a lot of time checking in on Zoom, making plans, cheering each other on, keeping the calendar safe, and we do this all this work together, and it's a beloved community. We've experienced some significant deaths this year in the staff, and it's not been easy. But God has been at work among us, comforting and strengthening and leading us on. And we can see with our very own eyes that God really is our rock and salvation. I give thanks for every person near and far who has committed themselves to praying for Hennepin members, friends, and staff, because your prayers really do make a difference in our lives, all of our lives. We're strengthened and encouraged by them. I give thanks for sending God's spirit, for God sending God's spirit so we have the courage to be the church for just such a time as this. I give thanks to all of you who refuse to live in fear, refuse to give up, refuse to sit back and wait for others to do the work of building beloved community where all are valued, all are welcome, all are respected. You show up and you do your part. You rise to every occasion to be a faith-filled and forward-thinking congregation. And I am blessed and so many others are as well. I'm inspired by your confidence in God's goodness and your belief that indeed God is great. And because God is great, we can do great things to honor God and make God's love real and visible in the world today by doing all the good we can in all the ways we can and for all the people we can forever as we can, as John Wesley said. I give God thanks for the freedom we have to dream with joy and anticipation for what is ahead because we do believe that God is leading us into a new year full of possibilities and promise, even in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. We dream of growing our online community, not just for such a time as this, but for all time, for people who will never be able to come in person to be a part of our community in person. May they be a community with us in other ways. We dream of growing our small groups and our online connections, growing our community and global impact as we give to ministries of compassion and justice, as we march, as we activate, as we work for green, a greener earth. You know, God has big plans for us. God will shepherd us into new fields this year so we can share the love of God and neighbor with a world that is desperate for a, work, a word of hope. I give God thanks for all these things we receive, all the gifts, the time and the talent and the treasure, gifts given with love and anticipation for what God will do next because we have been faithful in giving our tithes and offerings for the ministries of God's church. I give thanks every day for the opportunity to give thanks, to have life and breath to sing praise to God. I hope you feel that too. There are so many reasons to give thanks. How will you give thanks? I love Thanksgiving Day, and it does sadden me that we cannot be with our families this year, sitting around the table, laughing and enjoying a great meal. I urge you to stay home and be safe to wear your masks and to care for your neighbors in this way. But make no mistake, God will be with us wherever we are, loving us and blessing us even as we are apart. And perhaps this year, because things will be a little different, we will have more time to pause, to reflect, 
and to write a thank you note or two. One of my thank you notes will be to God. It is my Hennepin commitment card. And as I fill out my commitment card to make my commitment to God's church, I am grateful and I want God to know it. I want you to know it. Making my offering is a way to say, God, thank you. You've blessed my life and you've given me the joy of blessing others. So take a moment right now. Take a moment to pull out your commitment card and to fill it out. Let it be your thank you note, written and sent and delivered to God as you make your thanks for God's blessings by blessing others through the ministry of Hennepin in 2021. Some will ask, well, why do I need to fill out a card? Why can't I just give whenever I am able? And the answer is you can. We are grateful for every gift, no matter small or how large, no matter when or how it's given. But filling out a commitment card helps you experience the double joy of giving thanks, and it helps our leaders plan for 2021 so we can be good stewards of all that God has entrusted with us. You're invited to use Realm this year to enter your commitment online so that you can look at it and look at your giving records on Realm. And if you need help with that, call the church office this week and we will walk you right through it. You can fill out your commitment to give electronically on, on our website, or you can fill out your commitment card and mail it in and drop it off or drop it off at 511 Groland this week. In a few moments, Pastor Frenchie will pray as we commit these gifts in our hearts to God with grateful and joyful hearts. But as we prepare to fill out our cards now, let's pray for God's guidance, God's direction, God's leading, and then let our thanksgiving be an act of freedom that we may receive a double joy in all that we have received from God. May it be so. Amen.
Beloved friends, in these next few moments of quiet, you are invited to open yourself to spirit and speak directly from your heart to God, as God speaks directly to all of our hearts, remembering that the prayers we hold too deep for words, spirit interprets so that God can answer them in the fullness of time. Let us pray now in silence. Please bless these waters, open our hearts now, teach us to pray. Please bless these waters, open our hearts now, teach us to pray. Beloveds, we join our voices now together as we pray. Generous God, thank you for the everyday gifts, the offered hand, the encouraging word, and the touch of friendship given and received. At the great feast of life, help us to be welcoming hosts who create places of genuine hospitality for all. May peace be ours as we dispel the mythology of scarcity, share hope, and offer healing. Amen. What are you celebrating this week? Where have you experienced the joy of life so that it's brought a smile to your face and perhaps an extra kick in your step? Well, I can tell you, here at Hennepin, this week, we're celebrating new members. 
Whenever the message of God's inclusive love and grace compels a person to actually become a part of this community, that, my friends, is a reason to celebrate. And so, I invite you now to join Pastor Judy, who you'll see in a few moments, along with Marilyn Newstrom, our liaison for Entry Point. Many of you will recognize her by her beautiful white hair. And Cheryl Gibbons, our Connections Coordinator, who helps people find their place and their pathway at Hennepin. As we all welcome new members, and then together we'll wish them a blessing of many, many years. Let's celebrate now. Friends at Hennepin, we are so happy today to welcome new members into Hennepin. And so we begin to, so they can make their vows of membership now. We are here to celebrate and make covenant with God and one another as we remember our baptisms and renew our commitment to Christ who has raised us, the creator who has birthed us from the beginning and the spirit who makes all things new. And so I ask you, will you turn away from the powers of sin and death and let the spirit empower you to be a prophetic voice for justice and peace? If so, answer, I will. I will. Will you be a follower of Jesus Christ, putting your whole trust in God's love and grace, which holds and guides us as we serve him with the church, which Jesus Christ opens to all people? If so, answer, we will. We will. Will you engage in the practices of radical hospitality, passionate worship, intentional faith development, risk-taking mission and service, and extravagant generosity so you may be equipped for faithful living? If so, answer, I will. I will. Will you, as a member of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. I will. Will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness, that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them, that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Amen. And now, new members, I'd like you to introduce yourself by saying your name. And then you can say, hello, Hennepin. Hi, I'm Alec Williams. Hi, I'm Allie Novak. And I'm Chase Novak. I'm Jeff Lassick. I'm Amy Ann Lassig. Welcome. We are so glad that you are now a part of Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank Hello, you. Hennepin. How are you preparing for the holidays? Are you cooking? Are you planning your Zoom call for safe, socially distanced contact with your family and friends? Are you thinking of how you can be a blessing to someone near or far? Well, if you are, here are some ways that you can do that and share life together at Hennepin. For many years, this congregation has been a part of the Angel Tree Christmas. The Angel Tree Christmas Donation Project is a partnership with the Minnesota Council of Churches Refugee Resettlement. And 
of course, like everything else in 2020, we're going virtual. So at haumc.org slash events, you'll find a sign-up form where you can choose which families you'd like to sponsor and which gifts you'd like to buy. Bring your unwrapped gifts to the East Entry by Monday, December 7th. You'll want to participate in Angel Tree. It is a wonderful way to help make Christmas happen for a new refugee family. Tonight is the final meeting of Raising White Kids, a discussion group led by Taylor Reeb and Becky Bolin. This lively group is engaged in how to inculcate anti-racist values in the lives of our children, helping them to see all people as beautiful and valued in God's eyes, and helping to develop the beloved community in the youngest people. It's a free group, and it's open to everyone. And of course, you'll find a link to the Zoom call at haumc.org slash events. It is Thanksgiving Sunday, and a great big thank you to everyone who donated an item, a coat, a hat, a scarf, gloves for the, win for the fall coat drive at the Dignity Center. Over 100 items were given this year, and they will provide warmth for many of our community who are marginally or even unhoused. You have made an incredible difference in the lives of people. Thank you for your extravagant generosity. Next Sunday, join us on campus at 511 Groveland Avenue for an outdoor Advent celebration as we welcome the light. It's safe, it's socially distanced as you drive through, get a donut, drop off your commitment card, and see the beautifully lit Hennepin campus, including this year's very special steeple lights. It's a wonderful time to be together in a way that allows us to still be in, be in good social distance, health with each other, but to welcome the season. And you will be able to see the lights as the sun goes down and the building is lit to welcome in the season. Please come. You'll enjoy it. Finally, today is not only Thanksgiving Sunday, it is Commitment Sunday. Commitment Sunday is a part of actually giving thanks to God for all of the blessings that we have received this year and preparing for all the ways that this community hopes to be a blessing in 2021 through ministry at Hennepin. If you haven't already received it, your commitment card is in your mailbox and you can always sign in to your Realm account to give online. You'll take time today, we will take time today to make our pledges together and remember what a joy it is to share our blessings, to build beloved community, and to be a part of the work God is doing to transform the world here in the Twin Cities and around the globe. Thank you for your extravagant generosity. Thank you for your commitment to ministry. Thank you for making the difference that builds beloved community. Oh 
of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, all our welcome. Thank you for worshiping at Hennepin today. As you go into this Thanksgiving week, may you be filled with the knowledge and the joy of God's goodness. May you share that message with all you encounter, reminding them that there is a place at the table and there is room, plenty room, for everyone. Beloveds, on your journey this week, may you be blessed in all ways. And all God's people said, Amen. Ah, women. Ah, children. Ah, animals. Ah, creation. Ah.